What is going on ladies and gentlemen? We are back again with another another Sister Wives video and this one right here is season 17 episode 10. But of course before we get into it let's start off by giving a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel, that is a member of Patreon and that is a subscriber as we continue to grow. Now with that being said let's not waste any more time and see exactly what went down this week on Sister Wives. A year ago when I looked at my and Cody's relationship it just wasn't really felt like I couldn't stay. But I hadn't quite decided to move and to leave. But I looked at our relationship how I was. I just got to thinking, it's not a relationship I would wish on any friend of mine. But you said you didn't want to be married to me anymore when we were talking about moving to Utah. So that, that conversation, I thought, my interpretation of the conversation was at the end of the conversation, I thought that you might be on team we can move. Like me got too criminalized. And I wonder why we're still here. Right, I feel like my kids, my kids love it here. This is the most likely place for any of our kids to move back, our adult kids. I'm surprised because I thought Cody was more in favor of this. But he's acting like we've never even talked about this and that he wasn't in favor of it last time we talked. Mary, I can't do marriage with Cody anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. Were you open to it? Were you open to moving, Cody? I didn't want to move. I like the idea of living in Utah. I don't like the idea of moving. To me, he was open to no. Utah. What, the but, end of the conversation. but I wonder, isn't Sorry. this bigger than... Okay. Okay. We're back here again. I mean, listen, I don't know anyone that's actually been following the journey that we've been doing so far on Retro Madness. Um, and that's the journey of watching season two of Sister Wives. And in season two, stuff in particular, it is all about how they've been, how obviously Cody's obviously been, been done for felony, all that kind of stuff. And they have to move out of Utah to a different location, okay? Because of course, they don't want the family to be broken up, all that kind of madness. But it's interesting because I've been saying... <laughs> I've been saying on there, people are in their feelings about it too. I've been saying to people that that um I don't know why Christine is so much in her feelings about moving. And it's crazy because now you fast forward to season 17, we're back in the situation where it's Cody and Christine again having this dispute about moving. I just want to say that for now and, you know, just let this play a little bit more. And just that. And this, oh, is yeah, bigger this, than just bigger. this wasn't just about the move to Utah. This wasn't just about... It was just one of those things where I was like, am I really just on my own already? This is what it felt like. Because I thought before, like, really honestly, he was giddy when we talked about moving to Utah. No, 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 no. I, no, I remember no. it different. It's fine. I mean... This is what I remember. I was interested in the family, not in the man. That's been your mantra. But it became about the man and not about the family. And that, I think, is my angry place. It is crazy because in that season two as well, Christine um, was asked a question. So are you, do you love me or do you love the girls more? I remember that as well. One of you was like, I reacted to it, reacted to it this week, <laughs> of course. Um, but listen, guys, honestly, this is why like doing the retro reactions has been a game changer for me, myself in particular. You know what I mean? Um, because, you know, everything that I've always really based my things on has been based on what people have said about the characters. Cody's this, Christine's that, Janelle's this, Mary's that, da da da, Robin's this, whatever. But now I've got a whole new perspective. And I, I can't say people like it, but hey man. <laughs> Let's just continue. That's the reason I'm struggling with this. It's because we've invested, 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 and it wasn't about the family, it was about the man. And this is my frustration. And it's also my accusation. I'm angry that you weren't willing to invest in the family, but you were only interested in what I could do for you, me as a resource for you. And it breaks my heart because now we're at this point where it's just over and it's done. I thank you for coming into the family and helping me sort of gather up this mess that I was in. It stings when he says that because it's directed at me, probably. You know, when Janelle came into the family, I was jealous. I was sad because I didn't have the time with him that I had had prior. You know, I was young. I was not yet <laughs> fully mature, uh, nor was he or her, you know? And I mean, we just, we were dealing with a lot of new situations. And so he's like, oh, let's get Christine and come and save the day. You know, and that, that stings. I also thank you for ripping off the band-aid so quickly because it was never going to work. I mean, trust Mary to make it about her, right? But to be fair, she has every right to do the same thing. I mean, she feels like there's a direct jab to herself in particular. I, I, I get it, you know what I mean? Um, and given the fact that Kobe did say that if Mary left, I wouldn't be that bothered about it. <laughs> but Christine leaving is a whole hoo-ha, which is a good thing though. I, I think it's a good thing that he's bothered about Christine leaving because it shows that he does value her to a certain degree. If it all had to be about me, as you had always indicated, it wasn't. 
And I think that's a low blow. And I think she was about the family. She's been about the family. She's been about the kids. And she needed more of a relationship with him. You know, I think there's a point where you stick around, be miserable, miserable for years, decades. Well, here's the thing, Janelle. I, I agree with exactly what Janelle just said there. But why are you still here? Are you not miserable? Mary, why are you still there? Are you not miserable? So, like I said before, I agree exactly what Janelle said, but um, it's annoying that she's saying it on behalf of somebody else when she's in the same boat of being miserable. I mean, if she tells me that she's not, I'm not believing that. But anyway, we'll continue. Hmm. And if X, Y, Z, when I put this jumper on, it was clean. Obviously, man had a little bit of a little protein. Smoothie. Nice little thing. Yeah. Just putting it out there, okay? Don't be judging me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you came into our lives. You did us a favor. You're leaving. I almost feel like it's a favor, too. But I, I don't know because I'm still upset because I'm trying to figure this out. This is awkward. They're sort of hashing out the relationship in front of us. But I'll if, it, if they talk, <laughs> if they're talking, I believe that there's always a chance for a miracle. People go through, like, get close to divorce and then change their mind all the time. She may say she's divorced, but in my head, technically, she's not. And so I'm just kind of like, well, maybe they can, they can talk this out. So. Don't worry, just think about what uh -huh. I said. I mean, could they talk it out? Yes, but um, <laughs> it's hard to talk it out when Cody's is dominating the bloody conversation. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I guess maybe, you know, Christine's patient for him to finish and then, you know, she'll say her say. But yeah. All I know is that both people, both people have to be heard uh, when it comes to talking it out, you know what I mean? And I think one of the biggest problems that Christine's had with Cody is that he hasn't listened to her as much as we, the way she would have liked him to have done that, yes. Which is, which is completely respectful and understandable. No. Um, so can that. Well, you better not give me any rebuttal. Just listen to what I said. I mean, I, I don't know who this patriarchal guy is because this is not the guy I was married to for years. I did love the idea of a family. Of having sister wives and raising kids together. If you and I don't have a good marriage, and like it's, it's an important part of a plural family, that each relationship and each marriage is strong too. We always talk about this spokes in a wheel, and when there's a spoke that's broken, how do we keep it going? And I stayed. I made it about the family. I did so much for the family. It was all about having family functions and family get-togethers and family parties. My house was always open to everybody. I loved the big family activities that we had. The big family is great, but when you feel like you're a minimal person in Cody's big picture and you really don't even matter in the big picture, it changes the perspective on everything. I would say communication would have been key to solving that, but I understand that it wasn't because Cody, again, uh, wasn't someone that was open to a conversation of actually taking what Christine said seriously. Because, of course, in one of the most recent episodes, I think it was episode seven or eight in, in season two, um, you know... Uh, Christine, all she wants is to have her voice heard. And all she wants is to have her voice acknowledged. And Cody was always hard at giving her that. You know, he would, he would listen to her, but he wouldn't really give her the, uh, the reassurance, the clarification that he has actually listened to her voice. But the saddest thing is, is that this relationship that they had in this, and just all, everyone, everyone involved is that it's always been a case where Christine would say something, Cody would say something, and they go back and forth, back and forth, but nobody else would say anything. And I think when you're a family, everybody should have then, then have a say. If you're going to have a conversation in front of everyone else, then you all talk, then you all talk about it. If you're having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, then of course it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know, and I feel like in the most, in, in, in this episode and in the episode as well that I'm referring to is that everyone is there listening. This one, everyone is here listening. But for some reason... Mary, Christine, no, Mary and Janelle will only say their piece on a cutscene. They won't say their piece there. You know, whether that piece is supporting Christine or not, or Cody or not, it doesn't matter. They don't say it there. It's like, it'd be great if they just had a discussion all together, but. Hmm. I've been heartbroken for years. For years, I've been heartbroken in our relationship. I was tired of being heartbroken. Because you've. Just tired. No big picture. It's just you. You don't think I stayed in the big picture as long as I did? I guess. Because I, I want it to work. Thank you. I want it to work. It wasn't. I don't know. There's this realization of, um, screw it. You know, it's like, listen, this has been bad for a long time. And I sat here whining about it breaking up recently. Whereas I'm lucky it even lasted this long. 
I, I'm coming to know the exact reason. I don't know. I think I think I'm angry because when you get divorced, you're supposed to be. I have no idea what's going on with me, but I am really upset by this. And if I really boil it down, if I bring it to the core of what's going on, it feels like after all I've done, I'm being rejected anyway. And it's just not rejection for me. It's rejection for some of my kids and my other wives. I mean, listen, that's not fair at all. Because you're only looking at it on one perspective, Cody. You're only looking at it from your perspective. And that is not fair to the slightest. You shouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean? You should be open to just hearing and understanding what she's talking about, her point of view, and then bounce off what she's saying, not bounce off what you're thinking. There's a fine line when, you, when someone's talking to you and then your response is based on yourself rather than your response being based on what they've said. Your response isn't really based on what she's saying. It's based on whatever you've already got in your head because you just want to get your opinion out there, which isn't cool. Nah, it's not cool at all. Do better, Cody Brown. But anyway, we continue. Friendship is off with your kids because of COVID, not because of me. Bull, you're telling them. It's Christine telling them. She's running to this person, to this person, to this person, to this person to complain about the relationship. She's playing a game. She's been playing games for years. I mean, listen, maybe there's a possibility that she has been saying things to the kids, but there isn't really any proof for me to say anything, to be honest with you, in general. But I would like to think that she hasn't been saying anything to the kids, and it was COVID and COVID behavior throughout that, that pushed the kids away. But this is the thing sometimes, you know, you never really know. You never really know, know why, why kids will turn their back on you sometimes. Is it actually because of yourself or because the other parent isn't doing X, Y, Z? Who knows? But it's a bit of a sticky one. But yeah. They're just called <laughs> I, I cannot figure out why I'm so angry. I mean, it is sad. It I've is seen sad. you I've seen you grieving, Cody, like in a way I've never seen you grieve before. You disguise it, but it's grief. I don't know how to explain it. He's just been off. He's he's gone to a more angry place quickly, quicker than he ever did. I'm surprised Janelle actually spoke to Cody for first. <laughs> like she actually spoke. <laughs> process for him i guess maybe i'm mad because i feel like an investor who poured everything you know that he had into something and and then you know it just didn't work in our marriage i was putting so much effort i was holding her hand i was kissing her well, i wasn't in love i was doing it as my duty as a husband and and she's not either i mean she quit loving me years ago but now that we're here i'm just so upset because it's like it's it's not the breakup of two people it's the breakup of a family I mean, if she did stop loving him years ago and he stopped loving her like years ago and it was just a case of just getting along. And then now it feels like, I can see his point of view, but I can't say it's, it's, it's the correct one, but I see his point of view. It, it makes sense, but mm, yeah. Mm. You, know, you have a look on your face like you know the whole world, but you're not going to say something. Like the, what? You look like the bird that ate the, ate the mouse. What do you think I have to say? <laughs> I don't know why he's saying this to me. I really don't. I mean, I've had plenty of thoughts throughout the conversation, but they're really not, it's really not my business to say. Tony in her voice says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I really don't know what you're talking about. I know Mary's tics. I know her. She's leaking emotionally, uh, and I recognize it after all these years. It drives me nuts normally, but now I'm like looking forward to sort of be supportive. Really, I'm, I, I feel like I'm swimming. <sighs> It's some really deep water, and I'm looking for somebody to throw me a life raft here. Because I, I think this is like the last time we're ever going to have this discussion, right? So Me here and here? Well, yeah, the house will be sold. You'll be gone. This is it. And I'm the only one saying something, and I am just a mixed ball of emotions. You're not the only one that's saying something. I'm struggling today, so I'll do better another day. This whole thing that she's telling us today is just a shock. I don't know. Today, I just know that I'm not... I'm not completely like calm. I'm struggling. Some days I get really like, hey, we'll figure this out. We'll figure out some way to still make it be cohesive and workable and that kind of thing. I don't know today. It's a strange world to be going through a divorce, I guess, while you're married to somebody who's loyal and loving. But she's been going through it with me. She came in this family cap in hand saying, please accept me, please accept my children. She with me is being rejected. Dealing with a lot of anger and mourning. I don't mean to push you away, I'm just frustrated. You're not pushing me away, I know you're frustrated and I know you're angry. 
And I know it's hard. Hmm. That I'm frustrated by it. Plural marriage isn't easy. And on a bad day, you can feel trapped in it. And she's getting out of the, uh... The lobster bucket. I'm in this really hard lifestyle, partly because of her. And it has been very, very hard, partly because of her. And she's just leaving now. Again, um, that's not fair. You can't put the blame on one person. You know, in the, the day, when a relationship is going well or going or going unwell, it's good to reflect on both sides. He's got to he's got to he's got to reflect on his on his on his own performance in the relationship. You know what I mean? With his own role. If he's not gonna reflect on his role, then flat out being selfish, flat out being a narcissist, which is not cool to the slightest. I. Yeah. Let's uh let's continue. I'm not gonna lie though, man, but these these awkward silences and stuff. <laughs> uh TLC man, why you gotta do it? Why you gotta do it, man? Come on. So okay, I guess I have a question. Like are you in a place where you just wanna go do your thing? And those of the kids that have a relationship with you, you'll spend time with them or whatever. And then the rest of us that maybe you don't have a great relationship with, do we just need to, like, give you your space? Are you interested in some sort of a, like, trying to work stuff out, maybe from the past how many years? I think for right now, I need space. Okay. For right now. I have definitely been mourning the loss of the family culture. And, you know, I, there's this part of me, there's this part of me that has wondered, you know, if, if Cody's not in the picture for her, will it be easier for her to have a relationship with me and my kids? And so, so that's what I'm kind of asking. Um, but I do see us getting together for family reunions, and I do see us having fun together. And is that the extent of what you want? Friendships with the other adults. I think Janelle and I are super close, but I'm not that close with the rest of you. And for right now, I kind of need it that way. It's kind of that last little bit of hope, sort of dying. My immediate thought was, well, I may as well stand up and leave because there's no point of me being here in this conversation. She doesn't want to work on anything. And I have seen her non-acceptance of Robin. And I have seen her the same for me through the years. So. I said it before on the Retro channel. I don't know which episode, which episode it was, but go check them out. Of course, link is down below in the description or in the comment section. But I said that since I've started covering season two, Christine seems to not want to give robbing the time of a day that's what i've been saying and i stick by that as much as it hurts me um i'm i'm glad to know where she actually sounds i'm not trying to end it that way though no, to me it's not listen, an end. it's kind of like this isn't like, this isn't like a this isn't like a this is not a trap i didn't think question. so i didn't think so it's a real question i think it's a real question too no. and i appreciate the real question yeah, it's like i don't know what i am she's treated you like dirt from the very beginning that's, that's the relationship you have with her and that's the reason I'm angry. That's the reason I'm pissed off. Is because you never tried to have a really good relationship with these other people. And that's the reason I'm pissed off. That's not true. And it's just I did. vomiting out of me. Because I sat here with it just like, Christine, try and do this. You wanted to re renegotiate a relationship with me, but you wouldn't even have a decent one with them. Oh, it's about the kids. That was the easy part. Man. I mean, listen, all I know is I definitely agree with the fact that, in my opinion, that uh, from what I've seen so far on, on season two, that, and, and season one, to be fair with you, that Christine for me has never really made an actual effort with Robin and Robin what in season one Robin made an effort season two so far Robin has been making an effort but Christine from season one flat out said that I planned to be in a polygamous relationship but also most importantly I wanted to be the last wife when Robin came in she wasn't happy with the fact that Robin was then the last wife this has nothing to do with Cody favoring Robin because in season one, there was no favoring any wife. Season two, so far, there is no favoring no wife. Obviously, when I get to season three and, and so on, I'll obviously figure out more and more to see how it finally starts to shift. But there was no favoring. But for some bizarre reason, she always wanted to make jabs towards a Robin. 
Listen, do you know what it is? You're like, no one should be biased just because Christine's your favorite character or whatever, whatever, or a wife. Whatever. It doesn't mean you got to be got to be blind to 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 the way she's behaved. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't matter who your favorite is. Everyone's gonna have a flaw. Everyone's going to have something that's not good for for, for the table. And for me, Christine, from what I've seen, she just never liked Robin from the very get go. And I can only say it's probably because Robin took over the the role of being the last wife. Because that's that's the only thing that I can go off because that's what she said. But Cody is going over the top though. <laughs> you treat like dirt. I don't think it was that deep, but yeah. <laughs> Sacrifices that I made to love you. Wasted. Accountability is what I've been asking for here. And you are running away rather than being accountable. You're like, I'm divorced. I'm leaving. I'm done with you. You're out of my house. Instead of actually making the relationships work and trying. If you're not trying to be your best self in this relationship, be better than you are. Plural marriage is a higher call. Okay, look, I never tried to treat anybody like crap. I never tried. I never did. But you did. Well, I'm sorry. I, I did didn't to. So much. I didn't mean to. And you admitted to it. And you couldn't correct it. And now we're sitting here with a broken family over it. And you're like a freaking Pied Piper. You're trying to take the kids. No, that's with not you. even. Okay. I can sit here and dissect everything that Cody has said and give you my point. But we've done this for years. I'm tired. I'm tired. It doesn't matter. It's over. I do think low key that Christine and Janelle, low key, manipulative. I haven't pinpointed why I think Janelle, Janelle is low key manipulative, but there's something about her that is low key manipulative. It's just that she's very calculated with her comments. And I think with Christine, it's a matter of. She wants things to be done exactly the way she wants things to be done, which is fine. Everybody has a right. But the way she goes about it, quite funky. Quite funky. I don't think Robin so far hasn't given me vibes of someone who, is, who has been manipulative. Mary, definitely not because she's non-existent most of the time. And I don't think Mary has the... The capacity to be hit, to be fair. I'm not trying to call us dumb or stupid or whatever, but just don't get that vibe of Mary. Because Mary is just so switched off. She's so switched off that she couldn't care less. You see what I'm saying? So thank you. Thank you for coming. It was a blessing. Thank you for me leaving. Because now I'm sitting here trying to find the silver lining. I just hope it's a blessing. I just feel like for the past 14 years, I've just been sucking it up with her. You know, just trying to be a loving husband. And now that she's leaving, I just felt like giving her peace of my mind without leaving. This ain't my fault. You did this is what I feel like. I don't care if that's not fair. That's how I feel. She did this. She's going to go around telling my kids that I didn't love her. I feel like she needs to realize here with this that she wasn't loving me. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Cody needs to stop thinking about this whole thing about, you know, Christine, this Christine, about the Christine and the kids. Well, he, his focus shouldn't be on trying to blame Christine. His focus should be on trying to find a way to repair whatever the damage has been done with the kids. That's it. Christine isn't your issue. You are your own issue for your own relationship with your children. Point blank, period. Even if she has said X, Y, Z to the kids and they have gone with it, probably because you haven't done your, your role in the manner. Like, I put it all I know is if you've been a good parent, then no matter what anyone says, your, your kids, your kids aren't going to believe anyone. See what I'm saying? They're not going to side anyone, side of anyone. So if I'm him personally, forget if Christine said anything, it doesn't matter. You just do what you got to do to be a good father. Simple as one, two, three. But we continue. I'm not trying to take sides, but I feel like Cody was really harsh, even though he tried to dilute it a little bit. It seemed very pointed to my relationship. I just feel like that being a good sister wife. It takes both sides. It takes reciprocation. It takes work on all sides and work on the part of the husband. Janelle has a great deal of sympathy for Christine during his divorce. But it's a disappointment. It's a sadness to me because Janelle has shown me no tenderness, no kindness, no empathy. Well, I'm going through shit. I didn't try and be about any emotion. 
This is not just emotions. That response from Cody was not just emotion. That response from Cody was real. And he said some things he probably has been holding in for a long time. I'm glad he said it. I, why don't they talk to me? <laughs> if I had such a about me, why don't they talk to me instead of talking to Cody? It doesn't help. I know that in our family, every one of us has had a conversation with another one of us about another one of us. It has happened with Robin, with Cody, Janelle, and Christine. Like, everybody. I learned very early on in my relationship with Cody. Venting my frustrations about a sister wife didn't work. It made him angry, it made him upset, and I realized I was talking about someone he loved. Christine, for two years now, was constantly complaining about her sister wives and why she didn't want to live with them in one house. It hasn't been the other wives tattling or backstabbing her or anything like that. It's been her telling me how she felt about them. I guess I just wanted to double check. I mean, listen, if he's got the proof, then he's got the proof. You know, it sounds like you'll continue to have the relationships with the people you're close with and um, those that you are close with them. And just, you just wanted to stay distant. Okay. All right, for right now. That right now is a lie. There is no right now. This is forever. Like, this is what I'm saying. It's crazy though, because you see that Robin still wants to have a relationship with Christine after all these years. Phenomenal. I know I would have given up a long time ago. <laughs> Mary's like, Mary's like, I'm going to bounce with you. <laughs> We're done out here. You just said you don't want to know me. <laughs> Savage. Through the years, as I have had issues with Christine, I've tried very hard to approach her, to try to talk to her, to text her, to call her. I was met with walls, rejection, um, just her not wanting to discuss things through. I feel like there's been some things said against me behind my back. So do I want to be friends with someone who complains about me behind my back? Well, not right now. But you've been doing the same thing, though. Let's not be a hypocrite. I will say this though, Robin's crying does, 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 does explain her kids. I remember, like, I don't know what episode it was in season two, but <laughs> the kids started, were crying. And I remember, I don't think it was Janelle's kids. Janelle and um, maybe Christine's kids are like, yeah, we like her kids, but they're always crying. We just like, that's not how we, we, we've been raised. They just need to stop crying. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue. Well, Christine announced to me and the other wife that she was moving the house sold and she was leaving. I guess this became the ultimate awareness for me where I finally had to admit she's leaving it and I had a meltdown but I'm trying to put that to the side and uh, go on with my other relationships as best I can since we all talked to Christine in her house we've all sort of retreated back to our little holes so I don't know I haven't seen anybody on the way everybody's planning but I have to keep moving forward on the property I don't know if it means I'm gonna live here alone or what but my eggs are all in this basket and I'm just moving forward APS came out and I talked to them about everything about electric mm -hmm. APS stands for Arizona Public Service they're basically the provider for electricity in this area so we can't get electric for an empty lot it's a little bit intimidating to think about staying over the winter. I, I think maybe it might work without electricity. I'd have to have, I don't know, I'm willing to try. Because I believe so much in staying out here and bringing this house to fruition. Like, okay, so we could, we could get electric with a permit for building though, right? Yeah, so I mean, that's down the road, but in October, I'm going to have to move up there for a little bit. So I've been at the trailer two months. It's mid-August, I have two more. The fact is though, the best thing that Cody can do is just focus on children and wives. He said wives, children and wives. Okay, don't just focus on wives children and wives okay that's it four months before the permit runs out in our county we only can stay on our own property for four months a year in a trailer so i have to have somewhere to go for november december january february hopefully by february i'll start building so i plan to move up to lot three which is going to be christine's lot for the winter i know my heat works because i've been using it i mean i'm really good to try generators working really good yeah no, it's so great my heat is propane and i have these very big tanks and i just need a generator or a battery which i would charge a battery during the day and then it runs all night i can run the heater so i'm willing to try it I, it's, it's a really big difference. Are harsher. It's colder. Way more snow. It's just a hard winter, and I can't even imagine trying to do it in a fifth wheel. But basically, you know, I Savannah is settled in. She's okay. You know what I mean? She's doing all right. So my ultimate goal with building would be to have a house built by the time Savannah goes her senior year. That is about a year from now. I'm up against huge odds to make this happen, but the plans are being drawn. I know what it's going to look like. I can visualize it in my head. I want this to happen, so I could be done by next school year if we get if everything stays on track. There's there is so many moving parts to this, and she keeps trying to move forward without. Coming back to the one main thing, that's the main thing. We have to pay off the property. We do not have the means to pay off the property. Therefore, we cannot get the lots organized the way we need to. Christine is picking up and she's moving to Utah. We're, we're done. She's done with us. She's out. She's leaving, so she's basically handing over her, her value in kind past to me as exchange for my equity in her house that she's selling. 
but we can't pay off Coyote Pass by selling off a lot because we've got it. We we need to pay it off so we can reconfigure it so we get more value out of it. You know, I mean, like maybe it's a horrible thing, and I I give up. But part of me is like I'm just determined to try to make this work. Okay. Look, Cody has never really been engaged in my housing since we moved here. He was mad when I went from my first rental to my second rental, even though the second rental was much bigger. He was mad because it wasn't as nice. But you know what? He has a house that he lives in up on the hill with Robin, and it's really nice. And I have nothing, so I'm trying hard to build myself something here. <clears throat> Going back to what I was saying before, and yet you are still here. Still here. <laughs> ah, some people. Come on. The original plan from the very beginning was what we would build on Coyote Pass, but we ran into some real problems when we moved here. So we bought a house for Christine, and then eventually we had to buy a house for Robin. I know this is bothering Janelle, but I've been invested in this from the very beginning. And the problem is, is we do discuss it, I get involved in her house, but she doesn't like me being involved because I disagree with her. So instead of coming to a meeting of the minds, she just does whatever she wants. Look, I know you're like, we should have just bought, but I felt like this was the right thing oh, No, no, it's, it's not even just buying, it's just renting. But if I were to rent in town, it would just be out of sight, out of mind again, you know? I mean, so that was part of the whole reason I wanted to move out here was to keep me moving along. I have gotten myself in a very stupid position. I have nothing to leave to my kids. My hands are completely tied because everything I have asset-wise has everybody else's name on it too. We all are owners of property. Uh, our names are different pieces of the property. So we do, we actually all do have an asset. My home does have Cody's name on it. You know, through the years, you know, we've had multiple people on the homes because in the past we really have just worked together as a family, you know? And so it, it really didn't matter. We all just kind of had each other's backs and you know, we're all in this together. Honestly, I gave half the proceeds from my house in Lake Vegas to Robin to help purchase this house that she's in currently. We also, at that time, pulled a lot of money from the joint family account to help get her into the house. We have a family account, and the same amount of money is in it as when we bought Robin's house. And it was okay to deplete at that point to, to pay for Robin's house. And I'm like, we did it for Robin. We did it for Christine. Why can it not be my turn? Well, it wasn't a matter. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, why couldn't it be your turn? I mean, I, I really don't know, to be honest with you, but... um. Just know that the money that could be going to your home, Christine's taking it. <laughs> you know your friend that you're defending? Yeah, she's taking it. <laughs> or your sister wife, yeah. You know <laughs> anyway, we could do you. A matter of finding the money for Christine's house or finding the money for Robin's house, it was a matter of having the money. Now we don't have the money. So I'll keep moving forward because I have to think that whatever we're doing is going to blaze the trail for the other pieces. Yeah. I'm in this weird place with my wives. I've got this huge struggle that's going on with Christine. And what's happened is I've just become agreeable. And so I'm sitting here just going, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I know it's just, there's a, there's a disconnect. And in order for her to start building on this land, we have to pay it off. All right. I needed a place where I could actually nurture a relationship with Janelle and Savannah. And it's too late. We already have the RV. We're looking to get propane. All right, baby. See you later. See ya. It's Janelle called him baby, you know. All right, baby, see you later. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> Exhausting our emotional resources. I'm not asking him to do anything. I'm not asking anyone else to come out here and build. Nobody else has to make any decisions. And I'm not asking him for any money except for the money that the family has pledged to pay off this property when we first bought it. So that's all I'm asking is for him to honor that commitment, for everybody to prioritize that. And then after that, I don't care. I'm just trying to build something for myself here. Today was, oh my goodness. Fun, fun, school. Today was the first day of school for the kids, but the most important thing is, is it's Ari's first day of kindergarten. Solomon was in third grade last year and he was online the whole entire year. This is his first day back in person too, which is really fun. Hi! Hi, Ariella. Hi! Hi. Hi. That's the first day! How was it? Yeah! Did you make friends? Yeah, yeah. We did get a report from Ariella's teacher that there was a girl that was there that was shy and sad, and that Ari was very helpful that she tried to hold her hand and uh, help this other person. Hey, come here. Hey, I want to know how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it was good. Ari's very gregarious and very brave. She's a little girl that I'm actually very proud of. My friend was sad that I wouldn't leave her alone. Okay, your friend was sad because you wouldn't leave her alone? Yeah, I'll try and do another so she couldn't feel lonely. Were you being too much of a pest? Oh, oh thank you so much. It's been nice. Stop bugging her. You're, you're bugging her? Oh, really? Oh, I'm so sorry. She, she kept running away from me. Why was she running away? Oh, she was a tiny bit mad because I was engaged with someone and she had a man, but he cut her off. Break it up, yeah. Were you nervous when I dropped you off to school today? Yeah. You were? Did, you, did that teacher take you to your class? Yeah. And you were okay? Yeah. I almost ran back there and I was like, okay, no, first day of school. Mommy, first day of school. Mommy, first day of school. I'll tell you what's a damn shame though. Like, these kids, all of them, all share the same dad apart from obviously Robin, uh, Robin's first, first set of kids. And it's a shame that Christine wants to be with herself and her kids and Janelle and her kids. Mary only has one kid, of course. Of course, you know, Robin's got kids. They're all siblings. All kids should be in a situation where they can all chill. I'm not saying that's not the case, but it is annoying that Robin wasn't really open to, you know. Well, then again, I can't say she was open to that area, but 
then again, Robin did say that to make a relationship with her and her kids. And, you know, so to be fair, it is kind of annoying because I feel like the kids should all be allowed to or open to the idea of just all being, you know what I mean? I feel like Christine's choice to leave is fine, but the choice to have space away from everyone else is not okay. I mean, the kids can still talk via phone calls or whatnot, but it'd be nice if there was something different. Yeah, unless I'm missing a step, but that's, 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 that's pretty much it. Almost sad when she dropped you off. Yeah, I was like, my baby, my baby. I think it was the hardest. That's the hardest drop off I've ever done. And I went and got in the car with Cody and I was like, gosh, that that's scary. That's a little bit like emotional because he's like, that's my last partner too. And and it was, I don't know, it was just kind of like this moment we just sat there in it going, whoa, you know, this is this is kind of difficult to do. So Cody, especially when they were little, was such a good dad. Like I can remember a lot of things like walking in a line, probably trying to go brush their teeth or something. I thought Cody was stellar. He did such an amazing job relating to his kids. When each of Cody's kids were born, they all just brought him so much joy. I mean, he loved hanging out with them. You know, he was always a really, really good dad. I think one of the most important parts about me leaving Cody was to keep the good memories that he has with the kids present. He used to wrestle with the older kids all the time. I just think it's important to remember all the good memories that the kids have of their dad. You don't want your kids to have just remember all the negative times that doesn't serve anybody. Uh, what would you call this? Your unicorn? What will you irrigate everything with that apple? Well, almost but the question is that are you putting that into your kids' minds? Are you reminding them of these things? That is the other question as well. But then again, should they should they be reminded? Not necessarily, because of course these are memories that kids remember themselves, but they are kids. So, so, so kids do need to, you know, to be remembered, but uh, reminded, sorry, but you know. Yeah. Good job. Ariel is my 18th child. And there is this sense of this being the last, both for me and for Robin, of being a very something we just want to cherish. I sort of want to every day engage her and find out what was your day like. And, it's a poignant thought, sobering, if you will, to think that this is your last out of so many. All right, did you have a great day at school? Yes, I did. Did you have a great day at school? Yes. Brianna, did you have a great day at school? I had a great day. Craig, because the boy was there. Let's go. Oh my gosh. She's going to graduate this year. Woo woo. And cut. Wow. <laughs> Next time. Well, that's that for this week's episode of Sister Wife, Season 17, Episode 10. I'll catch you guys in the comment section in this video, of course, and hopefully I'll also catch you guys on Retro Madness as well as we continue to power through season two and so on. But hey, thank you so much for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and peace.